Okay, everybody, welcome to this edition of Sonic Comic News and for June 2nd, 2011. Well, apparently, Ken Penders, to top it off, is at it again. Um, from what has been reported, in addition to his lawsuit against Archie Comics and Sega, or mostly Archie Comics, he has now decided to sue Sega and Electronic Arts. Now you might ask yourself, what does Ken Penders have against Electronic Arts? What's the deal there? Well, apparently Electronic Arts was responsible for helping to release and develop Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood. Now we all know the story there. Ken Penders says, and some say he's right, some say he's wrong, but basically Ken Penders, Ken Penders claims that the Dark Brotherhood is basically a ripoff of his stories, of his storylines and characters from the comic that he created. So he has decided to now sue the company for what they have done. Now some say it's a little ridiculous that he's suing four years later, but take a look at what he did a year ago or so. Years about three years or four years after he left Archie Comics. Well, anyway, a lot of people feel that this is another mistake on his part. This is a no-win situation. So, again, Ken Penders has filed another lawsuit. On the other hand, now, speaking of Sonic Comics, Ian Flynn recently did a interview with Nintendo Power. And in this interview, we see three-page preview of what part one of Genesis is going to look like. And apparently there's a hint right off the bat that Sonic's almost remembering certain things, but he doesn't know what. Now, according to what Ian Flynn said about this arc, and I think I can pull it up a little bit here so I can read it to you, Let me see if I can find it. Page 234 on the Sonic Stadium form is where it's located, or actually 233 to be exact. Uh, but basically, Ken Penders does an interview with Nintendo Power. I think it's here. Yeah, here it is. Does an interview with Nintendo Power. Now, he basically states these are a few... Now, here's the thing about this interview. Nintendo Power, Nintendo Power basically talks about the Genesis arc. And it says here, and I quote, this is what they describe before they go into the interview. This is by Chris H. of Nintendo Power. This is what they describe. They say... The Sonic Hedgehog comic book series, going strong since 1993, is undoubtedly one of the most successful examples of video games crossing over into other media. And while Sonic and his pals have been on many comic book adventures over the year, this summer's Sonic Genesis storyline, which coincides with Sonic's 20th anniversary, promises to be the most exciting yet. Written by Ian Flynn and drawn by Patrick Spaz Pazani, I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong, who also comprised the creative team behind the new Mega Man comic. The story begins with the dramatic return of Dr. Robotnik. The evil scientist's later pl latest plan, the evil scientist's latest plan not only results in the death of a major Sonic character, I think they may have got the information wrong because the news Newsorama one says life hanging in the balance, but this is what they say, it results in the death not only results in the death of a major Sonic character, but again, like I said, life hanging in the balance, according to Newsorama. And that's what Ian Flynn told Newsorama. But causes the entire Sonic universe and all the characters' memories to be reset. In other words, it causes the universe that we've read and the characters we know of, causes all that to be reset. The result is a celebration of Sonic's past. As the Blue Blur finds himself rediscovering his friends, and reliving 
the events of the original Sonic the Hedgehog game, including ventures into cl classic locales <coughs> such as the Labyrinth Zone, Scrap Brain Zone, and the all and the retro goodness continue use from there. Though the Sonic Genesis story arc will last only four issues, 26 to 29, the repercussions promise to be far-reaching. We recently spoke to Ian Flynn to find out more about this epic tale, as well as an upcoming story in 230 based on Generations. So basically, like I said, they state there's a death coming of a major character, while Newsarama's interview states it's a life hanging in the balance. And that's both by Ian Flynn. Ian Flynn said life hanging in the balance. They say death of a character. Who knows? Now, he says that they had major plans for 225 from the get-go. And the, and the fact that it coincided with the 20th anniversary of the franchise meant they had to do something, meant they had to do something extra special to honor the Sonic Planets aligning. He says... Given the direction of the next Sonic game, the temporary reboot seemed like the best way to push our story forward and to capitalize on the classic Sonic love. He didn't state when they asked why they cho he chose Genesis as a story as a title for the story. He says it's in part to honor the Sega Genesis, and that the aspect of Genesis is to suggest a new beginning, which is just what this story will be. <laughs> They asked the que then they also asked the question, what are the differences between the rebooted world and the regular Sonic continuity? He says it's a clean slate. This is what he says when they asked the question, what are the differences between the rebooted world and the regular Sonic continuity? He says it's a clean slate. The years of world history from the Echidna civilizations to the Acorn monarchy. He, um, to the Great War don't apply anymore. We start with Sonic on an adventure to figure out why animals are disappearing and robots are taking the place. That said, there will be lo a lot of little hints to veteran readers that this reboot isn't exactly what it seems to be on the surface. So basically what he's saying, and I guess if we read the preview pages, or not preview pages, but the preview descriptions for part three of Genesis, I think we get an idea of where he's coming from with this. Then they ask, from the looks of it, then they say, then they ask, from the looks of things, the first half of the story takes a lot of clues from the original Sonic game. Will the following issues be addressed on Sonic 2, 3, will Tails and Knuckles show up? He states here, the first half is from the original Sonic, while the second half takes, takes its set pieces from Sonic 2. We won't be getting into Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles, which could easily be an arc all in itself. Tails will definitely be showing up. Then they ask the question, did you have to change your approach to writing the characters in the rebooted universe? If so, how? Then he states, and this is all from this interview, he states, a little bit. The character relationships we take for granted are now gone. Tails is still in his early hero worship days, and any other familiar faces will be meeting Sonic for the first time. It'll be both new and familiar all at once. <sighs> now they asked, you know, what was the collaboration process with Sega? Would Sega like for the story arc? Was there any different? Was it any different than usual? And he states there was a lot of discussion on where to take this arc, how long it should be, and how heavy it should be influenced by the games, both past and upcoming. In the end, we settled on a four-part Genesis arc you'll be seeing in soon, capped off at the end with a tie-in for the upcoming Sonic Genesis game. And then they asked, we, why would you consider this, this a good jumping point for new readers? And he states, because it's self-contained, because it's a self-contained continuity, the continuity light, light, bundle of easy accessible Sonic goodness. <laughs> it's Sonic at his most basic and recognizable, bopping bad nicks, foiling Dr. Eggman, and saving his animal buddies. Veteran readers will have plenty of nuances to enjoy, <laughs> but the Sonic Novus should feel right at home. 
Then they continue, how is this story going to have a lasting impact on the Sonic comic universe? He states, I can't reveal too much about that yet. Dr. Eggman is working with an incredible, volatile powers in a very haphazard way. So in other words, he's saying that Eggman is working with powers beyond his control. Once Genesis is over, the fallout will continue to affect characters and plots in the book for at least a year to come. So at least for one year, at the end of September and October, this and until October and December of next year, this will all uh, pan out and, you know, come to an end, I guess. Now, he says that the Sonic Genesis tie-in will be another place, another time format. So, that's basically some of the things he gives on Sonic Genesis. Now, what does that mean? Well, that technically means that it it's a bit of a reboot, but it's more like, I guess some people have stated in previous posts, it's basically like DC Zero Hour, Crisis on Infinite Earth, Marvel's Ultimatum, uh, Marvel's House of M, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's basically what it sounds like Genesis is. Basically, it's a clean slate. Basically, he's stating that a lot of things with this story arc in Clean Slate will not apply anymore. So, maybe Sally's not a princess anymore. Maybe Sally's just Sally Acorn. Who knows? But, um, but I think if we read the preview description of Part 3, it kind of gives us an idea that what he meant earlier in this interview by this, isn't, this reboot isn't exactly as it seems, kind of gives us an idea. So... But yeah, that's the interview that Ian Flynn had in the June edition of Nintendo Power. And this interview apparently can be found in Nintendo Power magazine on page 50 to 51. So 51 and page, page 50 and 51 in Nintendo Power is where you can find this interview. So apparently that's, that's what's happening. So we don't really know what's going on just yet. But it sounds like, to me, it sounds like he's trying his best to um, throw people off with a lot of these hints, even in interviews. It sounds like that to me. And I think Nintendo Power got some mis information misled, because in the Newsarama interview, Ian states a character's life is hanging in the balance. They say results in the death of a major Sonic character. But we don't know who that Sonic character is. All they say is Sonic character. They don't say, oh, Sally's dead. Or, oh, this and that. We don't know yet. So, anyway, that's apparently what Genesis is going to be, according to what that said in that interview. So, who knows? Like I said, it sounds like he's very reluctant. You notice how he says, I can't reveal too much about how it's going to affect. So that tells me he's, not, he's really trying to not hint too much at what's going on. So... That's about it. I'll put a, a link in the description box for both this and the Ken Pender situation. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the interview, apparently, from Nintendo Power of, with Ian Flynn about Sonic Genesis. And, you know, give or take what you think on it. But um, overall, I have to say that I think it sounds interesting. And I think... We're just going to have to wait and see what happens. And that's just the news items right now on uh, um, Sonic Comic, for Sonic Comic News. So tune in next time when I get another news report going. And have a good Thursday and peace out.